When you receive wisdom, there is a there there is a measure of God's mindset being given to you so that your life will go the way that is scheduled to go. When you receive wisdom, your brain takes on a decision-making machine. The whole purpose why God gives you wisdom is so that you can access choices that you're supposed to make for your own betterment, your own benefit. So God gives you wisdom because he's going to use you to make the decisions that align your life with abundance. Always remember this. The father is thinking about abundance daily for me. So every chastening, every rebuke, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 says, now no chastening seemeth to be uh, 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 pleasurable for this present time, but grievous. No chastening seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, it talks about that chastening does not feel joyous. It is grieve. It seemeth like it's grievous. When you are chastened in the present times of your life, but it says that it produces, it yields the peaceable, the peaceable fruit of righteousness. It yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. What does that mean? So when God chastens you, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness, which means that now you operate in the brain focus of God, how he would do a thing. Now you're in the system of the kingdom of heaven. So you understand that uh, there is a chastening that everybody has to go through to break off all those layers of yourself that abides in Satan's system. And Satan's system will keep you outside of the riches of God, the wealth of God, the abundance of God. Let me show you something. Wealth and riches is the reward that God has reserved. It's reserved. God doesn't give anybody wealth and riches, just boom. The wealth and riches are always on reserve. It's reserved by God. And the purpose why God reserves wealth is because he guides you to it. Isaiah 48 verse 17 says, I, the Lord, thy God, I teach thee how to profit. This is so important. A lot of people don't catch this. He teach you how to profit, which means that he going to guide you to where abundance and wealth is. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides you to your wealthy place. Psalm 66, verse 12 and on. It said, thou hast brought us out into a wealthy place. The wealthy place is a location where finances is no longer being hindered or slowed down towards you. Which shows you that there are departments of everybody's life where finances are being slowed down or hindered from you. That's why the wisdom of God starts to deal with your heart because God doesn't get pleasure. The Holy Spirit is not on earth enjoying moments where money is hindered or it is not getting to you according to his schedule. It bothers him. See, in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, when the Lord is teaching the disciples give, he taught them to give, but then the next part, he was teaching them about money cometh. He was teaching them about supernatural money. He was teaching them about the provision tied in to your giving. 
I want you to remember these things. Jesus is training them for Acts chapter 4 in Luke chapter 6. I, I want to slow this down. I want to slow this down. Jesus is training them for Acts chapter 4 in Luke chapter 6. You notice that Acts chapter 4 has not shown up in their life. He is showing them how to get it to show up. The great grace is not being revealed in full manifestation in Luke chapter 6. But yet the great grace is being explained. This is how you get there. The Lord is telling them, if you give, it shall be given unto you. I want you to think about this. The Lord is literally telling the disciples, I'm going to use you to activate my abundance in your life. I'm going to use you to activate people giving you money. I'm going to use you to set in motion all of your promotion, all of your provision. And see, a lot of people don't listen to Luke chapter six, so they never see Acts chapter four. And the crazy thing about it, Acts chapter four is supposed to happen to you. And even though it's supposed to happen to you, it might not happen to you because Luke chapter six has to be dealt with correctly. See, see. The Holy Spirit already knows what financial attacks you're going to have in this life. It's already before him. He already knows about it from the top to the bottom. He already knows every financial thing that's going to pop up, every news that's going to pop up. He already knows about every hindrance. That's why you must approach God with financial humility because you're going to have to do what he's telling you to do when nothing looks like it's going wrong. Because there's a day coming. Satan got a day for everybody that's walking with the kingdom of heaven system. And Satan is saying, I I'm going to execute this day against you. When you are honoring God, he is in covenant to honor you back. One of the ways he honors you back is by delivering you from evil. All throughout Psalm 18, it talked about how the Lord delivered me from evil. Listen to what it says right here in Psalm chapter 18, verse 3. I, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be delivered from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies. That's Psalm chapter 18. Psalm chapter 18 was dealing with all type of instances where God is delivering you from your strong enemies. What is Psalm 18 depicting? This is the dimension of harvest. Harvest is where God honors you because you honored him. And one of the ways he honors you is by creating your rescue from the plans of the devil. Satan has set this thing up against you. Satan has used a strategy, a weapon against you. And God honors you by saving you from it. God delivers you from evil. Look what it says right here. In Psalm chapter 18, verse six says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. My cry came before him. Even into his ears. Saints, I remember when I was homeless. Because I had such a revelation flowing in my soul. Every time I spoke, it was like I was right next to my father in heaven. Every word I spoke, it was like we was face to face with each other. 
I wasn't saying, Lord, please, please get me out of this situation. No, no, no. Because the revelation started from a heightened awareness, knowing that everything that's going on around me, he's watching it. When we pray, he hears, he answers us. And when we cry, he hears our voice. Emmanuel. 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 He he, he's listening. See, what the Bible telling you right here, when you pray, he's right there listening to your cry. He knows that there's something going on around you that you want him to change. See, this is why you must always Not get anxious because the Bible says in the book of Matthew, the father already knows what you have need of before you ask him. He already knows. So just think about it. If a rich man knows that you need money, if a healthy man knows that you need healing, if a safe man knows that you need rescue, and he is already aware of this, and he has power to transfer what he has to you, just think of how well your faith should be working. When we pray, he answers us. And when we cry, he hears our voice. Emmanuel, God is with us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. When we pray, he answers us. And when we cry, he hears our voice. Emmanuel, God is with us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. When we pray, he answers us. And when we cry, he hears our voice. Emmanuel. Now, the system of the kingdom of heaven, it on purpose works in adversity. It works on purpose in famines. It works on purpose in moments where it seems you are neglected. The system of heaven, the kingdom system, God has unlimited money, provision, favor, and plans to cause issues that you're experiencing to be solved. In the kingdom of heaven system, it requires the recipients of it to have faith, have trust, and rest in him. Which is often a difficult decision because it hasn't been practiced throughout the course of your life. What does that mean? Throughout the course of your life, you, you, have, you have linked up to anxiety faster than rest. You want to panic faster 
then be patient. You, you want you want to get nervous rather than to be at ease in the Lord. And so the 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 regiment of rest is often a difficult is a dip, it is a difficult realm because you haven't practiced that all throughout your life. Your flesh like to overthink. Your flesh like to be concerned. Are you listening to me? Your, your flesh want to be concerned. That, that's real deep what I'm telling you. Your flesh want to fret. See, the flesh of everybody is not a student of God's financial power. You hear what I say? If you're taking notes, write that down. The flesh of everybody is not a student of God's financial power. Everybody's flesh is a student of Satan's power. Wow. That's why when the Lord asks Philip, where are we going to find food to feed these people? You notice Philip can only talk about Satan's power in the natural. You notice Philip didn't answer the Lord and say, oh Lord, my God, we have power in you. To release from the heavenly economy and to decree and declare and to give thanks and multiplication was sure. You notice this not on Philip's is not in his consciousness. See, the kingdom of heaven system is not is it, it, it is not in functionality oftentimes in people's brain. They're not thinking about it. To the degree, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, you notice what it's telling you. Remember the Lord thy God, it is he that giveth thee the power to get well. Why does it tell you to remember that is the Lord that gave you the power to get well? Which means that it's so easy to forget about the financial power of the Lord. It's telling you to remember. Which means that it's so easy to forget. You see what it's saying in Ecclesiastes chapter 11? That if you regard the clouds, you will not reap. Now, me and you both know that the clouds are on the earth. It's in the heavenlies. We see it up there in the first heaven up there. We see clouds. Okay, but the clouds is a part of this natural realm, this visible realm. It says if you regard the clouds, you will not reap. Now, oftentimes when we deal with forecasting, the meteorologists, whoever is telling the news about the weather, they talk to you about the clouds. It's going to be cloudy, no clouds. It's going to be sunny. They, they, predict, they base your focus on clouds. I want you to see this. So clouds represent, in Ecclesiastes 11, the things that are happening to you right now. Your work situation, your health situation, your money situation, your bank situation. All of these things are the clouds that come to numb you that you're in harvest time. Wow. They come to desensitize you. Clouds is everything that Satan magnifies to close the portal of money cometh so that your faith is no longer working and the portal closes up slowly and gradually because money cometh through faith. Money cometh through hope. Money cometh through praise and thanksgiving. Money cometh through resting in the Lord. And while you, you, you're not in the things that are of faith, the portal is slowly closing. Little by little by little. Let me show you. When you regard the clouds, here, this is so profound. When you regard the clouds, 
You cancel your signature on the papers to receive your harvest, your inheritance. You cancel your signature. You're widening it out. Are you listening to this? This so big. When you regard the clouds, you changing your address. The packages that's supposed to come to you, you're saying, no, let me let me move away from it. I know I know that I already pit this as my mailing address, but I'm out. I'm not coming back to this address no more. I'm not going to be here for it. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to be here for, for, for this harvest no more. I'm not going to be here for this abundance. I'm not going to be here for this moving of the spirit that come to increase me. When you regard the clouds, it means that Satan has successfully gotten you to be persuaded by the devices that were sent against you. Imagine that. Satan was behind all the things that came to steal your focus so strong that now you don't got no time to use faith. You don't got no time to expect money cometh, healing in your body. You don't got time to expect no financial favor. You ain't got no time to expect no financial favor. People forget the seed and the seeds they have sown and the power that was containing in that seed. They forget it. And all Satan has to do is send enough trouble your way. Now you're studying the trouble and not the double. Your seed that you sowed is not going to create hell on earth. So if you see the hell on earth, you know that the hell on earth is the clouds that have come. So that I can regard this. And I'll never reap. This department of he that regards the clouds shall not reap is so mighty. Because if it's talking about me not reaping, it literally means that I was supposed to reap because I did so. Wow. No, no, no. Listen to what the text is saying. If you regard the cloud, you will not reap. Well, well, I would not have been able to reap if I did not sow. So the fact that it's telling me that if I regard the cloud, I will not reap. It means that the original schedule was for me to reap. But I have to pass this test. Of Satan showing me all these things. And I can't deny it. It's happening. I can't deny what I feel in my body. I can feel it. I can't deny what I see at my workplace. I can see it. I can't deny what I'm seeing in my living arrangements. I'm watching it. I'm hearing it. I can't deny it that it don't exist because it's happening right before me. Meanwhile, these things proceed the manifestation of what I created with my seed. I done created some stuff with my seed. But these things have to happen before I can see that creation appear. Ah, this is so big. This so big. This is so big. Imagine the harvest is right here. On the path to the harvest, you're traveling. On purpose, Satan has, watch, watch this here. I want to show you something. On purpose, Satan has all these things set up. Watch, the harvest is right here. You are traveling to the harvest, but then this start appearing. It comes to block. The harvest. 
And see, you're not thinking about the harvest now. You're thinking about this. You're not thinking about the harvest. You think about this. This is what's taking up your days. This was ruling your emotion. This was taking up your expectation. This. The Bible says if this shows up and you regard this, even though you were supposed to get this, you already sold for this. It said that you'll never get it. Wow. How would you feel if you went to a restaurant right now? You bought something. And it was about $500. It's a lot of money. You bought it. And they tell you, you can't have it. You're like, well, I bought it. And then they tell you, hey, but in order for you to receive this, you was not supposed to come inside of the building. You were supposed to stay outside and wait for us to bring it to your vehicle. Because you came inside to be in here, according to the law, you have disqualified yourself, even though you purchased the item. And you'd be like, no, no, I purchased the item. But they, they, then they bring out the contract and show you. I said that you're not supposed to step out your vehicle. We're supposed to bring it to you in order for you to receive it after you pay the $500. And you look at the contract and it was in there. Well, God has a contract. He said, if you start believing in everything that Satan is sending your way. If you start to pitch your trust in everything that Satan is sending your way. He said that you're not, you're not going to reap what you already paid the price to reap. What is the other mystery behind? If you regard the clouds, you will not reap. Let's go into the anatomy of this. Let me show you something. The Bible says that God is not mocked whatsoever man so that he that that shall he also reap. It says, do not be weary in well doing. For you shall reap if you faint not. So if we go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, if we go to Galatians chapter 6, you find out that when you regard the clouds, you actually start becoming tired of what God anointed you to do to activate your inheritance. What he taught you to do becomes a irritation. It becomes a problem to you. So when the word of God says that if you regard the clouds, you will not reap. You might be like, well, what is it if I just I get a little bothered by what Satan doing and I, you know, I, I lose my cool. Why, why would that disqualify me? Why if I start being persuaded by what's happening? To, why would that disqualify me? Because now it's not just, hey, I'm focusing on what the devil is showing me. But now everything God did show you to even get the harvest and activation, you'll start regretting it. Man, I should have kept my money. I shouldn't have had came to the conference. I shouldn't have had, I shouldn't have had fallen prophet Joshua Holmes. Are you seeing? Regarding the clouds is also carrying an impartation of regret. I shouldn't have been respectful. I should have spoke what I needed to say. I should have gave a piece of my mind. I should have did it. I should have punched them back when they punched me. I should have sliced their ties for how they treated me. You'll go back and regret. See, regarding the clouds it also imparts a spirit of 
regret. You yourself will want to undo the fact that you even gave place to your cross. I shouldn't have carried that cross. My life was way better before I took up my cross. I had way more friends before I took up my cross. I had way more people liking me before I took up my cross. I had way more access when I before I took up my cross. That's the secret behind regarding the clouds. That's why the Bible says if you regard the clouds, you will not reap. Because the clouds, it reinaugurates you as God's enemy. It places you back into the altars of your family. You thought that they were saved. They was enemies of God. When you regard the clouds, you step right back into their altars. And guess what? Simultaneously, you have this anger towards God. And this is the same thing that was hidden in them that you couldn't see. So while you up there talking about, oh, my mama, my daddy, oh, my mama, my mama, my daddy used to serve the Lord, my baby, 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 baby. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. Why are you talking all that stuff? Just wait until God tries your heart and wait until God allows you to uh, be opposed by the clouds of the devil. And watch how you have to fight the good fight of faith not to turn against God. Why is that even existed? If you got an altar in your life that's of God from the generation before you. No, it's an altar of the devil. That's why you yourself have to fight and to say, I'm a, no, I'm going to break this altar. And when you overcome, that's when God shows you, okay, here you go. Here you go, daughter. You get to have what I promise you. You wanted that house with high ceilings? Come on in, baby. You wanted that nice Lamborghini? It's yours. You wanted that new wardrobe? Here it is. You wanted a sex life? Come on in. You wanted to eat what you want, drink what you want. You wanted to wear what you want? Come on in. You get to enjoy the pleasures forevermore. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. Let me show you something. See, Satan don't want you to... Overcome the clouds. Now let me say this before I show you this in Matthew 25. Remember what God appeared to Moses in a cloud. And the cloud represented the manifestation of his presence. So understand this, which is the glory. The clouds that Satan shows you is the manifestation of Satan's presence. So there is a time before you get to the harvest where God permits Satan to manifest Satan's presence against you. When that happens, you might lose your job. You might lose your children. You might lose your house. You might lose your parents. You might lose even somebody that you're doing business with. You might lose your health. Because when Satan manifests Satan's presence against you, this is the final stage before the harvest appears. But if you submit yourself to Satan while the clouds are showing up, while the manifestation of Satan's glory, the satanic glory, if you put your faith in that satanic glory, you can't see the glory of God that brings money cometh, the restoration of your health. You can't sing, see the glory of God that sets you completely free from your sin. You can't see it. So I want you to see this. You got to overcome the false glory to receive financial glory. You got to overcome the false glory because the false glory going to show up before the financial glory is now there to bless and minister to you. 
Saints, I've been here. I've been here many a times with the um, the false glory of Satan showing up against me. I've been here many of times, more than you'll know. And when the false glory of Satan showed up against my life, the tangibility of God's anointing is not present. Why isn't it not present? Because God takes away the tangibility of his power so that you can make the decision that is in your heart. You know, you can only love the Lord in your heart. So if your heart loves or hates Jesus, when satanic glory shows up against you, it's going to press that to the forefront. See, if you would have talked to Judas five years before he did what he did, and you would have asked Judas, are you a believer? Judas would say, yes, I am. If you would have said, Judas, do you believe in the Lord? Judas would have said, I believe in the Lord. In Judas's heart, Judas does not love Jesus. So when time happens, when the satanic glory shows up, you see what Judas does. He takes the 30 shekels of silver. That's the satanic glory. That's the satanic money cometh. He took it. He made covenants with them to tell them the location where Jesus was. He's going to be in the Garden of Gethsemane. I remember he always go at this time around 9 p.m. He's going to be there for some time. It's going to be some of the disciples with him. This is the exact location. See, he didn't do that until satanic glory showed up. Now, when did the satanic glory officially show up? The satanic glory officially showed up at the Last Supper. While he was eating with Jesus. Just, ah, uh, ah. Uh, while he was eating with Jesus. Remember, this is where the satanic glory. Because the Bible said after that moment, Satan entered into Judas. Okay, so Judas had devils. Having devils is not Satan. Okay, there are people right now. You can have devils right now and still sow seed. You can have devils right now and you can still you can still pray. You can have devils right now and still read the word. You can have devils right now and still say, thank you, Lord, for feeding me. I'm going to show you something. Having devils does not stop you from taking steps towards God. Having Satan does. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. When you have Satan... Now you are a walking instrument of the gates of hell and their initiative. So Judas, all these times where he had devils, Judas, if Jesus said, everybody, I want you all to lift your hands, Judas would lift his hands. If Jesus said, everybody, I want you to take a seat, Judas would sit down. Judas obeyed Jesus now. With devils. You can obey with devils. It's when Satan comes and enters you. It's because you have succeeded with those devils, which means that everything that they wanted to do in you, you have said yes. You've permitted them to do it. And you have permitted them to do it for years, months, weeks, on end. And despite having the knowledge, you let them keep doing it. And so that's when Satan enters you. When Satan enters you, you'll have boldness to talk against Jesus, criticize Jesus, fight Jesus. You'll bring people against Jesus. That's when Satan enters you. Now, I want to say something shocking to you. Can you get to this point of Satan entering you and it be finished? It be done like it's done for you? No. Because I have many people in my life that Satan has entered them and I still was able to deliver them because they wanted to be delivered. 
And I made a pact with the Holy Ghost for them. We made an agreement. He picked me to be a guideline, a life support to them. Satan has entered them. I was able to set them free from Satan. So when, when Satan enters a person, that's not the end of the story. But oftentimes, let me tell you this, if Satan enters a person more times than none, it is a very difficult thing to set that person free. Because when you have devils, there's still a there's still a large space of yourself where you can obey God and like disregard those devils. Those devils could be there. And you know that they're there because you obey God and then you go right right back to watching that. You ain't got to be a rocket scientist, baby. You obey God and then you still go smoke. Those are devils. You obey God and then you still go fornicate with a man that God didn't give you. A woman that God didn't give you. So you know that the devils are there. But they don't have any authority to stop you from sowing a seed in certain times. Or saying the right words in certain times. But they are there. Now here's the wild thing and I want to say this and this is so powerful. If you have devils, they may not have authority in moments to stop you from sowing a seed or listening to your man of God's broadcast. But if your man of God comes to you and start pressing you, those devils will talk out of you to that man of God. Hear me. I said, hear me. Did you just catch what I just said? I said, if your man of God start pressing you, that means if I come to you and I start dealing with things of your soul and the will of God, and I start dealing with things that are in alignment with wisdom, those devils will talk out of you to that man of God. And you don't even know. You think it's you. It's the devil saying, you know what? Well, I, I still don't. I don't. And, and the, the devil is talking through you. They are talking through you to voice their opinion because they have it left. If a devil is inside of a man or a woman, those devils do not stop you from being used by God. But if the Holy Ghost presses you enough and starts to chasten you and deal with you, you'll watch how those devils start to speak through you. Those devils will start to manifest in your own vocal cords. And you, you, you will be, you'll be shocked to hear what you will say. There are people, they have a prophet of God. The prophet of God tell them to do something. They'll say, I got to ask God if I could do it. I got to ask God if he want me to go there. I got to ask God if he want me to do that, say that, if he want me to forgive that person. I got I to I ask God. Huh? God said in the word that if you believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. The prophet come to you and then you telling the prophet that you going to go ask God like God up there got a relationship with you apart from the prophet that he said. And when I say that, I'm saying like God is going to be the prophet Judas. He telling the prophet to go give you a word and then he going to slip behind the prophet's back and say, nah, don't listen to him. You painting God out like God is a Judas to the prophet. Because that's what happened with Miriam and Aaron. Their whole conversation was He's acting like God only talks to him. Don't God talk to us too? And God didn't even go rebuke them. You know what God said? Hey, Moses, I heard what they said. Go tell them. See, God was so far from them. He didn't even tell them, hey, you better stop talking like I just talked to you and I'm not talking to Moses. You better stop talking like that. God didn't even answer them, which shows you their rank. 
I'm showing you something. Those demons, those devils that was in Miriam and that was in Aaron, they didn't manifest until they got pressed. Did Aaron obey Moses? Yes. Did he have devils in him while he obeyed Moses? Yes. Did Miriam do what Moses say at certain times? Yes. Did she have devils while she did it? Yes. But those devils eventually started speaking through her. My goodness. Those devils started to voice their opinion. Their disagreement with Moses' ministry. I don't like how this is. No, 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 I no, I no, no, I no, I know that he said wisdom here, but this right here is not right. See, if you don't get rid of devils, you might obey God, but watch. Those devils are going to start interfering with the rhythm. They're going to start interfering with your psychological state. You're going to start getting bitter. You're going to start getting upset. You're going to start getting offended. How come I was here before? How come this person got promoted faster than me? I was here before them. Let me shock you. The prodigal son. We often magnify the prodigal son. But the prodigal son had a brother. And guess what? The brother didn't go as far as he went, but the brother had devils. The brother never disowned his father. The brother never asked for the inheritance. But the brother had devils. You know why? Because when he repented, the one that was the little Judas, took the inheritance didn't want nothing to do with the father. Went go spend it on harlots and all type of bad things. You notice when he said, I'm sorry. The brother didn't want to forgive him. The brother didn't want the father to celebrate him. The brother was jealous that he returned and received such a welcoming. The brother didn't go as far. As he went in depicting evil, but the brother had devils and the devils that his brother had, the devils that was in the brother started manifesting when he repented. He wanted him to go through trouble. He wanted him to go through laceration. He wanted him to go through chastening. He wanted him to go through hard times because the brother had devils. I'm shocking you with this teaching. And that's why I'm going to teach this word to you because I want you to be wise unto salvation and to move into true glory. When you have devils in your life, they may not have you. Become a physical murderer killing people. But they might have you killing people in your mind. You don't want them to get favored. You don't want them to go higher than you. You think that you're more entitled to what they're experiencing. That is as much as murder as blutchering somebody until blood comes out of their body. That's why first John says that he that hates his brother is a murderer. There's a lot of time where believers have devils inside of them. Those devils going to start talking through you if God press you strong enough. When God start telling you the truth about yourself, you'll see how those devils start to manifest. When God start to correct you, you'll see those devils. I'm helping you all understand what goes on when your man of God comes into your life. That's why the plan of God be hindered. Because you're not getting rid of your devils. And those devils at one point, they not only start to give you the reason why you should reject God's will, but then they start talking to you about the man of God. Because their whole goal is, if I get you away from him, I get to stay. If you don't follow the word of the prophet, 
hey, I'm free Section 8. I get to live here for free. I, I got my own place. I'm going to be eating good. I, I'm going to go sleep with who I want through your body. What if I told you that your baby daddy is 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 an unclean spirit that wanted to sleep with your baby daddy? Because when you leave, when you get free of the unclean spirit, why don't you want to sleep with the baby daddy no more? So what was compelling it? It was the spirit, unclean spirit, living out its life with your body parts. See, when you have devils, they live out their life through you. My goodness. They are living out their appetite through your body. If they want to be drunk, they make you a drunk art. Because that's what they crave. If they want to be a racist, they make you hate other races. Because that's what they crave. If they want to be deceptive, they make you operate in deception. Because that's what they crave. They use your body as a vehicle to drive where they want to go. Become who they want to be. Marry who they want to marry. Sleep with who they want to sleep with. Kiss who they want to kiss. Talk to who they want to talk to. Go where they want to go. They just use your body. Saints, you ever seen a homeless person on the side of the street? You ever seen them? Have you ever seen the person that keeps going up and down? And if you ever study a homeless person by the spirit, you'll study that sometimes they even want to sit down. But the demon that's inside of them, the devils that's inside of them want to roam and go to and fro the earth. If you look at the countenance of that person, they're tired. They want to go sit down, but they are a prisoner of these spirits that they have welcomed all throughout their life. They're not a victim. Don't get me wrong. We often call people victims. You got to know what a victim is. A victim is a person that experiences injustice and they sold justice. A victim is an innocent party. People that have devils are not innocent. Because if you take the D out of devil, what word do you get? What word do you get after you take the D out of devil? You take that letter. You take that letter out of devil. You get the word evil. That person, what they'll teach you that evil is contradicting. They was already contradicting God. This devil is living inside of them because they fit the atmosphere of contradiction. So oftentimes you see people with devils and, oh, I feel so bad for this person. You feel bad for them. You should be feeling bad for God. Because God was dealing with them and they decided to contradict God. That's how these devils knew it's safe for me to enter inside of this body and live here for five months, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Because this person is going to contradict whenever the Holy Ghost is saying, do this, be this. They're going to contradict it. So we know it's safe. Now, if this person is not going to contradict God, we know it's not safe. You think that, just think about it. You think that a devil want to live inside of me? I would call any devil from the satanic kingdom to see if it could enter me for one day. They will be tormented as hell. Because imagine, they got to be inside of my body. What I'm going to do, I'm going to study the word in 24 hours. I'm going to pray in the spirit all throughout the day. If somebody pisses me off, I'm going to be quiet unless the Holy Spirit want me to respond. I don't care if I look stupid. I don't care if I, it look like you getting the upper hand on me. I ain't going to say nothing because I'm real conscious. Saints, I told you sometimes I, I've been driving before. I got tinted windows. I see somebody, they'll they, 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 they flick me off, whatever. I don't roll down my window and say, <laughs> I, I'll give them back the finger. 
these fingers going to stay like this. Because these fingers don't belong to man. It belongs to the spirit of God. And if the spirit don't want to do this, it's not going to happen. If the spirit don't want to do this, it's not going to happen. I don't care if I feel like doing it. I'm not going to do it. And I don't, I don't care if I got to suppress. It's okay. If a devil was to enter me, what would happen if a devil entered you in 24 hours? What would happen if a devil entered you in 24 hours? What would be the result? Would they feel safe? Would they enjoy themselves? Let me, let me go into a deeper question. What if a devil entered into you for a month? These are, these are powerful questions. If a devil entered into you for a whole month, 31 days, would they enjoy themselves? What would be their reaction after 31 days? Would they like your Airbnb? Would they like it? That's deep what I just asked you. Would they like your property? And watch this here. If they left your property, would they want to book at your property again in the future? Because they had a good time. Oh. You know, if you ever went to a nice hotel, and somebody say, hey, we go into that hotel, you'll get excited. Oh, yeah, I like that, man. They got some good food. They got, oh, the air conditioning. Oh, it smells so nice in there. If a devil entered in you for 31 days, even if they left after 31 days, what would be their review on your property? Would they say, I don't like this here. Please don't go to this house. This house is full of light. I don't like all these lights on. They got lights on of praise. They got lights on. They keep on giving away money and name and see. They keep on forgiving people when I told them to get revenge. I told them to go see their sister. And they said that my brother, my sister is those that do the will of the father. Please don't go to this property. They crazy. They watched my every move. I couldn't even do nothing because they could see in the spirit. They having visions about everything that I do. I didn't have no privacy. I couldn't do nothing in secret. If I tried to send them a lie, they saw the lie. If I tried to send them deception, they saw deception. If I tried to send them a boyfriend, they saw me. If I tried to send them a girlfriend, they saw me. If I tried to send them a sex buddy, they saw me. If I tried to give them vape, they saw me. Me. If I tried to take away their Bible, they bound me. When they try, when I tried to create warfare in their life, they pit fire on me. I got burns on me. I got second degree burns all over my body because they keep on calling fire on everything that I'm doing. I don't like this property. Can the demon have a bad review after they leave your Airbnb? I'm telling you, if a demon leave my house, you know what they're going to be saying? I'm tired of getting burned. This is an arsonist. This person like to deal with fire too much. I ain't never seen nobody dealing with fire like this. Fire in the morning. Fire in the noonday. Fire when the sun go down. Fire in the morning. Fire in the noonday. Fire when the sun go down. Fire when everybody's sleeping. Fire when everybody awake. Fire when they're on the streets. Fire when they go to sleep. Fire when they're in the shower. Fire when they get in dress. Fire when they live in every single day. Every single day is a day of fire. It's too hot in here. I got to go.
What would be the review if demons entered you tonight? Would they say, I like this property? I didn't hear no prayers. I didn't hear no hallelujahs. I didn't hear no singing to the Lord. They not listening to their man of God. God sent them their man of God. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I'm good with that because I ain't sense no pressure. I feel I was cool. I was chilling out. The other demons go interview that demon and say, what was it like spending that night in that Airbnb of that believer? All was good. The air condition was real good. It was real cold because they cold hearted. They lovers of themselves and not lovers of God. They're real cold. Every instruction God give them, they stubborn. It take them three to 30 years to complete the instruction. I felt real safe around them. I didn't see no angels threatening me. They not moving with ministering spirits. They not decreeing nothing. They not prophesying nothing. I didn't see them pick up the Bible. I just saw them scroll on their phone. They listening to the word being preached, but it's not even from the person that God sent to them. So ain't nothing happening. All they doing is receiving information with the delusion that they receiving an anointing. <laughs> oh, 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 there's a remnant of people that demons are going to dread your appearance on earth. They're going to dread the fact that you're consistent with God. They're going to dread the fact that you won't leave the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. They're going to be afraid of you because they know every time you wake up, it's going to be fire of the Holy Ghost all throughout the day. Fire of the Holy Ghost. You're going to be on fire. It don't matter if I send fiery darts their way. They still going to be on fire. It don't matter if people betray them. They still going to be on fire. It don't matter if they lose their child. They still going to be on fire. Lose their house. Still going to be on fire. Lose their job. Still going to be on fire. Lose their ministry. Still going to be on fire. They're going to be on fire if they get bad reports. Fire if they get bad health. Fire if they get bad financial results. They still going to be on fire because they done made up in their mind to be steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. There's a remnant of people. You're not going to let your property be enjoyed by unclean spirits. No witchcraft spirits going to enjoy this property. No demons of darkness. None of the gates of hell going to enjoy this property. I'm always going to be a nuisance. I'm always going to be an irritant. I'm always going to be a pest to every single pestilence that Satan want to send my way. I'm going to be the tormentor. Ain't nobody going to torment my days on earth. I come to torment the gates of hell. And how do I do that? The spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. I'm going to keep my my mind stayed on him. Isaiah 26 verse 3. He'll keep me in perfect peace. I'm going to stick with the straight and narrow path. Money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. You, you think demons okay when they hear that? You think demons at peace when they hear that? They bothered. Because all spirits of lack, all spirits of poverty, all spirits of laziness. We serve and notice upon you. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to get my money because I'm going to follow the voice of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get my money. And I'm not talking about no small money. I'm talking about money that don't stop. I'm talking about money that don't die off. I'm talking about long money, strong money, King Kong money. I'm in the biggest financial era of my life. 
I'm in the biggest financial increase dimension of my life. I will have more money in October than I ever had in the history of my life. I will have more money in November than I ever had in the history of my life. I will have more money in December than I ever had in the history of my life. The money just keep on increasing. I received the financial increase of God on my life. I received the wealth of God on my life. Say this, I'm living in life and life more abundantly. I'm living in life and life more abundantly. I'm living in life and life more abundantly. I have more abundance. I receive more abundance. Say, say this, God is able to make all grace abound towards me. Say, as a matter of fact, say it like this. All of the grace of God is coming towards me and I am abounding to every good work. All of the grace of God is abounding towards me and I am abounding to every good work. I have an abundance to every good work. I am anointed to be rich. These are the richest days of my life. Money, you are loosed. I loose money. Anything I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I loose money now. All the money that's supposed to come to me in October is loosed. I'm going to walk through every door that the Holy Spirit has for me. All the money that's supposed to come to me in the month of November is loosed. I receive my financial life in Christ. See, Christ is a place where there's no lack. Christ is a place where there's no financial crisis. You got to learn to prophesy the financial open doors that is scheduled for you by the spirit. You got to learn to prophesy it. Open up your mouth for now on and call forth. I have investors, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, giving into my bosom. I walk through open doors of money. Every door that I'm walking through has greater profit, greater increase, greater debt cancellation. All things are working together for my good. All right, let's go ahead. Look what it says in Matthew chapter uh, 25, verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and he reckoneth with them. Verse 20 says, and so he that had received five talents came and brought five talents. So that he that had received five talents came and brought five more talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Look at verse 21. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I, I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I told you that when you honor God, he honors you. Look at what the Lord is saying. I will make you a ruler over much. This matters. Because if you look at natural conditions, you're looking for natural conditions to make you rule over much. No, the Lord saying, I, the supernatural God, I, the one that called those things that be not as though they were, I, the one that creates the clouds and you see them in the sky. These are new clouds every day. I create the bird. You see them flying. 
I feed the fish. I make food for the lion. I make food for the, for, for the mammoth, for the mammal. I make food for the cow, the creeping things. I make the water stay still so that it don't come over the boundaries. I pick the heavens up and I make sure it don't drop. It's me. I will make you a rule over much. The one that has all authority to create what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, if he wants. I'm going to make you a rule over much. I'm going to make you experience the honor that I am responding to you with. You gave me honor, I'm going to respond to you with honor. My goodness. Say this, I receive honor from the Lord. I receive honor from the Lord. I'm not going to faint because God is going to honor me. I'm not going to be discouraged because the Lord is going to honor me. I just got to be led by the spirit on how he wants to get this honor to me. I got to be willing and obedient so that I can eat the good of the land. I can't be lazy. I can't be stagnant. I can't be fearful. I got to be bold. The Holy Spirit giving me instructions concerning my workplace. The Holy Spirit giving me instructions concerning my living arrangements. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 And let, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let, let's look at this here. Let's look at this here. Let's go here. Let's go Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Look what it says. Before honor is humility. Don't be shocked when you're in a humbling situation. A humbling situation is a situation you wouldn't pick. You wouldn't pick to be in that situation. Saints, we won't. We want it pick nobody, nobody, me including me. We want it pick a situation in which God chooses to humble you. But before honor is humility. Don't get discouraged at the humbling. Before honor is humility, before the investment of all of the things being added, before you experience all that your seed created, humility all over again. Fresh humility precedes fresh finances. I want you to say this, money cometh to me right now. Money cometh to me right now. I receive provision of the Lord from every direction. My God is supplying all my needs according to his riches in glory. I receive the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I receive all grace abounding towards me. When, saints, we talked about great grace in Acts chapter four. What about all grace? All grace is greater than great grace. And the Bible said that when great grace came upon them, none of them lacked. Say, I will never lack another day in my life. I'll never be sick. I remember the uh, young lady, she was doing my hair one time. She was braiding my hair and she was sick that day. This was way before the conference. She was real sick. <coughs> All right, she. You got one more time. I better not feel no spit hit my forehead again. I don't need no healing. Keep that. Keep that. Keep that hip hop spit from hitting my forehead. I don't know what that spit got on it. We messing up my test. You gonna mess up my test? And keep that spit to yourself. That's all. <laughs> Do 
Saints, my hairdressers got big behinds, all right? I'm talking about if 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 you if 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 they go sit down, you gonna have to get two seats without the armrest. All of my hairdressers got big behinds, and let me, I, I'm telling you this for a reason. <laughs> I'm telling you this for a reason. <laughs> I don't. Let me get my Trump hands. I do not flirt with them in any way, shape, or form. I don't get their phone number. I don't talk with them personally. I don't be I don't be giving them no open signs. I don't be and, and they, they be giving me compliments. They told me I should I, am I a model? I look like a model. And all that stuff. I know what it means. I know what it means. That's why I wear print filters. I know exactly what it means. I just ordered two more from Amazon. I know exactly. I, I know exactly what it means. I know exactly what it means. A woman give you too much compliments that mean that she done, she done stepped into the fantasy realm about you. All of my hairdressers got big behinds, I repeat. I don't be thinking about them when I leave the um, getting my hair done. I don't go home and be like, oh, I wish I had that. I don't I don't have that problem. I, I'm telling I'm telling you this for a reason. They have big behinds. When I when I go to sleep at night, I'm not dreaming about big old melons in my in, 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 floating around. And, 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 oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. I'm showing you something. I don't get tempted by them either. I direct this brain. I control this brain. I'm, a, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I remember one day. Um, there was a guy that came inside of them and he was attracted to the, 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 the lady. Uh, and it happened to be one of the ladies in there and he was attracted to the lady, not knowing. Okay. So she was doing my hair. So he was, he was upset. <laughs> he was upset. Meanwhile, I'm like, nigga, I ain't, you can have her if you want to. And he was, he was upset now. And he said this to, he, he said this to the young lady. It was a, it was a black young girl. He told her, and watch this. I'm chilling. I'm coping. Stand. I'm not, I, I, you know, I look better than him. <laughs> he looked like McDewa. I look better than him. And I wasn't even talking to a young lady. I was just chilling. I'm cooling. I ain't flirting with her. I ain't saying nothing to her. Now watch this here. He's, he popped this thing out to her. He, he was so jealous. He said this, real talk. He said, I see you over there smiling. Meanwhile, I'm like, I can't see her doing nothing. I'm trying to get my hair done. Can I get my hair done? I can't see her doing nothing. Why are you bringing attention over there? I see you over there smiling. And this is what he said. You think that he looked better than me. You don't want to talk to me no more. Like, what in the crazy exorcism is going on here? <laughs> I don't have about four patches in my hair. I'm like, can, can she patch my head up, man? I, I ain't even studying you with them ashy shins you got. He was black from his thigh down all the way to the shin. It was white. Can she patch up these patches? <laughs> Can she patch up these patches? I'm not trying to worry about these chicken nugget legs here. I don't need these chicken nugget legs here. I don't want it. I don't want these Guatemala 
Dominican Republic. I'm good. I'm good. You can have her. I'm talking about her. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about her. That day was one of the most awkward day. Cause then he started talking to. He was like, he, you know, you know. Um, so, 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 you want to do his hair? You, you like him? You. Uh, and meanwhile, she wasn't helping the situation. <laughs> she wasn't helping the situation because. She, She wasn't telling him that she. <sighs> but see, I, I was telling you this for a reason. <laughs> back, back to what I'm saying. All my hairdressers got big behinds. I don't get tempted by them. I don't be dreaming about them. From day one, I ain't had no lust problem about them. I ain't think about sleeping with them. I ain't think about being with them. Because I'm good in my mind. I came to get my hair done. I Ain't, ain't nobody going to switch the purpose? I control. I came here for one reason. You think I'm going to let the devil switch the reason? I came here for one reason. And ham hocks was <laughs> ham hocks ham hocks was not on 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 the itinerary i'm saying this to you because this is a part of you also receiving your harvest don't Allow the enemy into whatever God gives unto you as a privilege. Don't let the devil start interfering with that thing and showing God, hey, no, Lord, I'm going to disregard the anointing now. I'm in this location. I'm going to disregard. Stay clear in your mind. Sound mindedness. Stop letting the enemy use people to switch up the whole purpose of why you're there. You got to be sound minded if you're going to move with wealth and money cometh. If you broken in your mind, you're going to be a problem for God because some of your investors, you think all of your investors going to look like whoop there it is? You think all of your investors going to look like crocodile? Dinosaur train? You think all your investors going to look like Bebo Lottie got more hair than she got body? What if God saying you're a good looking investor? If you're not sound minded, how the wealth going to flow? You're going to affect the wealth. You're going to affect the increase. You're going to affect the abundance. Let the money flow. By being sound minded. You know how much money God could get to you if you know how to govern yourself. How much money would God get to you if you know how to handle yourself? Saints, I, I don't say this cocky, but I'm not phased if a woman look good. That don't bother me as a as a person. You got to get to the point. If God send me somebody and they got nice physique. I'm going to be good mentally. I ain't going to let you corrupt my money cometh anointing. I'm going to 
will be good. Saints, I know how not to look. <laughs> I done seen one wife before, but I don't see her. <laughs> I, I can see her and don't see her. That's what I do. I done had sons. I done had sons in my ministry. I done seen their wives. I done been accessible to their wives. I done, I done, I done knew their wives. Let, not, let me not use the word new because you can't you can't use that word biblically. It won't it won't land well. I've never been sexually engaged with none of their wives in no way, shape, or form through conversation, through physicality, none of that stuff. I'm saying I know how to look and not look. If I see a man with his wife, I ain't. I'm not going to. I'm not going to have any dealings with that woman like that. I know how to look and not look. Number one, you already got a thing going on. What, what, what will happen in my mind? Woman, you all are receivers. You understand what I'm saying? You are receivers. So it don't even cross my mind like, hey, 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 no. I know how to look and not relook. Remember, staring, staring bursts lust. See, some of y'all don't know how to look and unlook. <laughs> Says, I'm going to share something with you. The Holy Ghost and me be having some conversation because I can see something. <laughs> and it don't phase me. I'm not thinking about it in a sexual way. So me and the Holy Ghost could talk about the thing without it. It, it does because the Holy Ghost know I'm not broken about it. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh Lord, you shouldn't have said that. Now I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know how I'm gonna go to sleep at night. <laughs> God, I've seen some things before. I've seen some things before. <laughs> But I see I'm holding my mind. I can handle it. See, certain words, if you hear those words, you wouldn't know how to handle it. <laughs> you got to take a cold shower. Baby, get out the cold shower. <laughs> get out the cold shower. Get out of the cold shower. God got to make you hold in your mind. You got to be able to look at somebody with nice physique and not let Satan be the author of that moment. You got to know how to deal because all your investors not going to be looking ugly. You going to have investors that look nice, dress nice. You going to have investors that smell nice. And say this, I received the financial plan of God for my life in the month of October. I received the financial plan of God for my life in the month of October. Everything that I'm supposed to receive in this month of October, I receive it. Say, ministering spirits, I send you forth to minister for me financially. Everything that I'm supposed to have, I receive it. When you are a sowing man, the Holy Ghost will give you a, uh, a wife, a woman that you can be sexual with and explore your fantasies with. God created woman for man, not man for woman. That's why you see Adam is, is, is appearing first. A woman came on the side to help him out. He needed help. Men need help sexually. There's not a man on earth unless his unless he don't work unless he don't work down there. 
And so, and some people, they, 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 you know, men need help sexually. <laughs> because we have so much life built up inside of us. Men need help sexually. And that's why one of the rewards when you're sowing, man, God will give you the correct wife. The correct wife will help you with your, your, your sex needs. That's why you spend your time as a man honoring the Lord so that when your sex needs come on the scene, God will let you feel in sex how you caused him to feel with sowing. How you honored him as a man, he'll let that woman show you. That woman will do you right. The Holy, <laughs> the Holy Spirit would, would manifest himself. In that woman so that you will see what your sowing been doing to God. It been making God gasp. <laughs> God was gasping for air. Huh? <laughs> you sow the seed. You, you sow the seed. You had God up there trying to reach for stuff. I, I. God was shocked by your sowing. When you sowing as a man, if your seed make God shout. What you think going to make you shout? These are questions that you got to think about. Saints, I done seen a lot of inventions in this life. I done seen vehicles. I done seen houses. I done seen all type of gadgets and gadgets. But to this day, I haven't seen one invention as interesting as a divine woman. I haven't seen one. In, I haven't seen one in invention more interesting in this life than a divine woman. It's intriguing when a woman fears the Lord. It's intriguing. And when a woman fears the Lord, he gives her sexual abilities to please her husband. I'm, I'm going to show you something. When a woman pleases the Lord, the Holy Spirit anoints her in sex. There are some women sometimes they be acting like they fear the Lord and they don't know how to do nothing strange for peace. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Women say that they fear the Lord. They don't know. They don't know how. They don't got no. They don't got no. no they don't got no deliverance on them. Huh? Their man going to stay bound because they don't got no deliverance on them. You saw the deliverance, the man started walking up the, little boy started walking up the, <laughs> little boy started walking up the back of the walls. Huh? What made him run up the walls back fast like that? You watch deliverance around church folk, they be like this here. Who is crying in here?
breathing like you ate your two-piece dark all extra fast. When a woman fears the Lord, he anoints you with sexual abilities for your husband. And everything changes in how you do a thing. You learn how to do things differently. <laughs> Y'all still, still laughing at it. Y'all still laughing at it. You meet the right person, they'll snore in your face. You be talking to me, like, is this nigga snoring in my face? Hello, hey, hey, hey. You awake? Oh, I, I, I just want to make sure. I heard you snoring several times. Like, I just want to make sure. You know. Be snoring all in your face. You done check their pulse. You done took their hand up there checking their pulse. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I done got drunk on here, boy. I done got drunk on this land, man. Woo! It's Friday night. Saturday night. Saturday morning. Make sure you watch the replay. Watch these watch these broadcasts and feed yourself. I, I, I have so much loads to get off of me. Get these loads. <laughs> I get these loads up off of me. And I'm going to be good. This weekend going to be a hot one. Get these loads up off me. I'll be a good. It's going to be a good weekend for me. So be ready. Be ready. Cause I'm, I'm going to be dropping a lot of teachings this, this weekend. It's going to be mighty. It's going to be mighty. Got so much inside of me that I'm going to be giving to you. So, I mean, watch the replay and get your sleep as well. Get sweet sleep as well.